Hello teacher, hello students, welcome to today's lesson. In our previous lesson, we've learned about promotion and methods of promotion. Promotion is defined as an organization's communication with external publics. There are different methods of promotion. These include advertising, personal selling, sales promotion, and publicity. In today's lesson, we will learn about communication and business communication. We will start our lesson by defining communication. Communication is defined as the transmission of information or message and understanding through the use of common symbols. Students, after defining communication, it would be easy for you to define business communication. Business communication is defined as the exchange of message or information within or among business organizations through the use of common symbols. There are different types of common symbols that are used in the flow of messages. The followings are some examples of common symbols in the process of communication. These include business letters, pictures, facial expressions or body movement, videos, audios. To be an effective communicator in an organization, we should ask some basic questions of communication. These include who, what, when, why, and how who indicates the senders or the receivers of the message, what indicates the intended message, when indicates the time in which the message will be sent or received, why indicates the reason why the message will be sent, how indicates the way or the method in which the message will be transmitted. Students, do you know the importance of communication in our daily life and in business organizations? Good. The following are the importance of communication in business organizations. Communication is important to facilitate efficient and smooth running of an organization and assure performances to achieve organization subjectives. Communication brings higher productivity with minimum cost and enhances the morale of the employees. Communication also facilitates democratic management approach by participating members of the organization in decision-making process. Communication binds people together and enhances the sense of cooperation among members of organizations. Students, let us see the process of communication and elements of communication. We will start with a simplified model of communication. 
Here is a figure which shows a simplified model of communication process. The model contains the sender or the encoder, the channel, the message from the sender to the receiver, the receiver or the decoder, the feedback from the receiver to the sender, the noises that disturb the communication process. The formal communication process starts with a sender. Sender is a person or organization who intends to make contact with the objectives of passing information or message to the other. The sender is the initiator and encoder of a message. Here is a person who is making a telephone call to another person to send a message. So this person is a sender. The second basic element of communication is encoding. Encoding is a process of translating the sender's idea or message into something the receiver understands by using the knowledge of language from personal experience. The third basic element of communication is the message. A message is the intended information of a communication process. It is the verbal or nonverbal components of language that is sent to the receiver by the sender which conveys an idea. The fourth basic element of communication process is medium. A medium or channel is the carrier of the intended message or information. It is a means through which the message travels such as through oral communication like radio, television, phone, in person, or written communication like letters, email, and text messages. Here, for example, a phone is used as a channel of communication through which the message is exchanged between the sender and receiver. The fifth basic element of communication process is decoding. Decoding is a process by which the receiver translates the message into meaningful form. It is the receiver's interpretation for the message. Students, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Let us see the remaining elements of communication. The sixth element of communication is the receiver. Receiver is defined as a person or organization to whom the message is sent. In other words, receiver is a person or organization who made intended response for the message. Here is a person who is listening to a phone call. So he is receiving the message and giving meaning to the received message. That means the person is decoding the message. The seventh basic element of communication is noise. Let us define together. Noise is any element or condition that disturbs or interferes during the process of sending or receiving information. Noise decreases the quality of communication process. The last basic element of communication process is feedback. Feedback is the intended responses of the receiver after the message has been received. For example, the receiver's verbal and nonverbal responses to a message, such as a nod for understanding 
or asking a question to clarify the message or feedbacks. Students, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. But it's time for you to do some activities to check how much you understood the lesson. Now get ready for the first exercise. State the importance of communication in our daily life. Students, have you tried the answer? Good! The following include some examples of the importance of communication in our daily life. It brings cooperation among people. It helps to establish good relationships with others. It helps to have an effective decision-making process. It facilitates people's engagement in helping each other. Students, let us continue with the next exercise. List the basic questions that we need to answer to have an effective communication process.
I hope you've answered the question correctly. Let us do it together. The basic questions for effective communication are Who, what, when, why, and how. Students, let us do the last exercise, which is a group activity. Teacher, please form groups of four students for this activity. State some examples of noise which disturb the teaching learning process in your classroom. Students, have you done your group activity? Good. There are different types of noises which disturb the teaching learning process in classroom. These include the noise of cars passing by, students shouting loud outside the classroom, and students talking to each other while the teacher is speaking are all noises that disturb the teaching learning process. Students, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Let us conclude today's lesson by summarizing the main points. Today, we've discussed about the meaning of communication and business communication. Communication is the flow of message or information from one person to another person and understanding through the use of common symbols. A simplified model of communication process contains the sender or the encoder, the channel, the message from the sender to the receiver, the receiver or the decoder, 
the feedback from the receiver to the sender and the noises that disturb the communication process. In the next lesson, we will learn about methods of communication. Until then, thank you, teacher. Thank you, students.